Welcome back. Today we're going to learn how to turn images into Lua two different ways. Let's get started. All right, so here it is, the BC348-0, made by RCA during World War II. Not really. This is my BC348-0, made by me in Lua with monitors. And so the reason we did it with monitors is because paint blocks are low resolution. You only get 9x9, nine nine, whereas with Lua, you get 32x32 32 32, um, in order to go ahead and create some detailed, well, not that detailed, but, you know, more cartoony looking things. So originally I was trying to import the graphic of the actual face, and that didn't work too well with the paint blocks, of course. And so then I decided that I was going to try to make it more into, I don't know, like suggest what features might be on the real radio. So that's what we have here, the, the, the uh, channel, we have a tuner dial, and then we have some just, you know, visual effects here, not, not for use for anything. And then the nameplate, and up here we actually have lights at work, so we have the power switch that we turn it on with, and we have the different um, lights. So we got power, microphone active, and speaker active, and then this is the signal. And all of this can be changed in the settings to change the colors, and I'll show you that right now. So when we click on the chip, we have all these things. We can do the start channel, we can do the dial speed, max number of channels, minimum number of channels, and then we have channel colors and alpha all the way down to the bottom here and you can change all the different colors of the different screens if you want, or the alpha. So that's what I did. Let's go ahead and try it. So we're gonna come over here and jump in. And there is a bug. I just talked to one of the devs and they did confirm the bug is real. I'm not crazy. It took me a while to figure out. I was like going crazy for like an hour. Like, why is this thing blinking? But turns out, and I'll show you what the bug is, is that uh, on the client side, there is a pulse that emanates from, I think, both the speaker and the microphone, but I'll show you. So to turn this on, we click right here on the switch. Oh, and I have my, my code there. <laughs> That's my debug code. Ignore that. But anyways, you flip that on, and you usually wouldn't get that false. But I was trying to figure out what was going crazy. So if you turn on the microphone, you'll see it starts pulsing. And that only happens because we're in multiplayer. So that is a bug, but it doesn't happen if you're playing local and you use this. So just so you know, that is there. All right, so let's turn that off. And let's just go to channel 44 really quick. We'll just bypass it so they don't copyright me again. And uh, I'll show you that we are receiving a radial signal. And this is like left side, right side to go up and down on the channel. All right, here we go. And, and it goes. One, two, three. Uh, oh, there it is. Woo! All right, turn it off. <laughs> uh, copyright strike. Whatever. All right, so now let's see how we did this. All right, hold on. So now we're in Photoshop, and this is the different parts of each screen. So this is the channel, and this is the nameplate, and of course we got some lights and other things here, but just going by the nameplate. So how I did this originally is I wanted to see if this was going to look good on my screen. So what I did is I went to a web page, which is made by Fluffy Pony, and this is an image to Lua. There's two of these pages. I'm going to link to both of them so you can use whichever one you like, but this one is the most simple one to use, and the other one is by Penguin, which is a lot of different settings that you can use to change how it, I guess, how it uh, turns it into code. I don't know, but what we did is I went over here and all right, selected my image. It starts to upload it right away and it converts it into code. So I went ahead and did this, and we get all this lovely code. Now, it does allow you to customize the code, but I couldn't figure it out in an easy way that I could mess with the colors uh, because it looks at the pixel data or something like that, and it's, you know, creating all this code here to do it. So the idea is I just went ahead and grabbed this just so I could look in Stormworks. So really quick, let me just put this together here. I wanted to show you this, but I didn't prepare. So now I have to do it really quick. And grab a Lua block and connect it to the out and then come over here and get rid of all this junk and paste the fluffy pony code in here. Hit okay, save this and close it up. Okay, now we go back over here. Lua, tester, must be this one. Grab it, throw it down, and go ahead and go into, do, 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 where's video? Video, oh yeah, that's video. And pop it right there, okay. I think that's it, did I do everything? I think I did. Okay, so then we spawn this, 
And what we find is that we now have the image transferred into the monitor. So that is where I started. I put all my blocks together, got them the way I liked, and then I did this. And as you can see, it took forever. So if we go into the chip, it's a mess. I could probably clean this up. All this is my interface. And then here is my blocks of Lua. So yes, I did go in here and I drew each line and I did that if we go back to Photoshop. So what you saw me doing is doing exactly this. So I went through here, got a screen line draw, came over here and said, okay, pixel number 10, X is 10 y is zero y is zero and then we're gonna our line is gonna be at zero at the end so of course you know we stay on zero so it's x y x y so we got x 10 y zero 23 is the one after because it draws to 23 but not on 23 so we put 23 there and then we go to the next row so the next row is what is it eight uh, yes, it starts at 8, it would be Y1, and it would go to 10, and there you go, 10. And that's what I did. So I basically... <laughs> <laughs> I spent hours going and writing all this code so that I could have it all drawn up by Lua. And then what I do is, if we look at... Oh, go out of here. Maybe this one's probably easy to read. Is I do stuff like this. So I use white noises code which is this right here, hex to RGB, so that we can put custom colors in. I set the colors here, and then what I do is I go and I make my if blocks. So if the power is on, then we use these colors. If the power is off, then of course we hide everything, and we use um, different blocks of code to draw the interface. So that one's not as good. Let's see, do I have another one? I think, eh, not that one. Not that one. Maybe it's down here in this mess. Yeah, this mess right here. So this one is doing the broadcast. No, not that one. Not that one. Where the heck is it? So Okay, here we go. So this one I have the different colors of power. Uh, power, microphone, and speaker. And if we go down here into the draw function, you'll see I'm doing different things. So if the power is on, we can do all of this by turning them on because it's available. And then if the mic is being transmitted, we go ahead and we do these colors here. If the speaker is transmitting, then we do these colors here. And that's all we do. And we have a nice interface that is kind of interactive. And that's what you see here is I am drawing the interface with the colors I've chosen. And I've gone ahead and uh, allowed us to do a flip of the switch, which is redrawing. I got to get rid of that false. <laughs> is redrawing. The, the switch upwards and it's also updating the code to say that this is now where you press so press down there press up there press down there up there and now see it's not up here anymore so that code is actually moving up and down and then so now we have it on our little light comes on with our power our background light comes on and then we're able to do the station now I did keep it because this was a you know an old bomber radio even if the power is off, you can still change the channels. It's just that you're not going to broadcast or pick up anything. So once the lights are on, you can see the channel. You can change the channel. And then if you, well, if this was working right, when I push that button, you would transmit. And when you get a radio signal, if I can get that up to 44, go up to 44. Da -da 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 and if this was working right, it would light up when we hit the channel. So right now you'll see the signal strength comes up, but the little uh, speaker broadcasting light does not come on. And that's a, just a bug. But that is it. You can download this on the workshop now. And it is working. It does have some bugs, as I stated. Oh, also, oh, I forgot to tell you this before I do this. I, I kind of had to sacrifice <laughs> portability. So... This is really great for a bomber because all my bombers have usually a table on in the inside and have a chair. So actually, let's load that thing up. <gasps> We're not done. I lied. 
All right, so if I load this up and look inside here, the bombers have room usually for a table and a chair. And so this one now has the table implemented, but this whole thing here is the chip. So I do have a large chip and that's because um, I was not able to put everything on one monitor size. I had to use a three or I have to use a giant monitor. So I decided to go ahead and break it down to a three by two instead of using the, I think it's three by five maybe, I can't remember, but it's, it's huge. So I went with this and so the chip is right here and it uses all the inputs and outputs for the video signals. And of course I've got the antennas and the microphones and all that stuff, but it still works great. And, uh, oh look, there's no false here. And it uh, kind of makes me feel like I've got a bomber radio now. And so anyways, all of this started because I used the Sheepdog radio. So I'm gonna link that below as well, which is a more modern radio. So if you haven't seen that and you're making a modern vehicle, you probably wanna use a Sheepdog radio. And if you have room in a bomber, an old bomber, you might wanna use this radio just for the look and feel. And of course, like I said, you can change all the colors. So you can make it customized to your bomber. And that is it. I think that's it. Ugh. All right, well, that's it for today. So again, you can download the Sheepdog radio down below in the description. You can download the BC348 radio, download in the description, and you can use both pages to convert your images to Lua, either the Penguin page or the Fluffy Pony page, all linked down below. And that is it. Now I can get back to converting these bombers now that I have my bomber radio. Oh my gosh, let's get out of here. Bye.